I don't even know that I agree that it's so bad it's good. I just think it's Drake's radio and I'm in like a store. I'm not. Oh, I got it. Although, I don't know if there are many songs that make me go, oh, I got mm -hmm. in a department store. What do you think? You, got, you guys got any? If I'm in a department store, I might actually leave because of this song. It's because I, I, like I like to taste the other flavors. Real flavor heads know. Yeah, <laughs> real flavor heads out here licking bark. Happy Red Bull Day, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and God blessed us, everyone. Should taste like grass. It doesn't taste like grass. Get the fuck out of here, dude. It's bad. I, I love this pomegranate thing. And the thing that you think tastes like grass is pomegranate bit, seed. It's the pomegranate yeah. seed. You can taste the seed. It's, it tastes like pomegranate seed, which I can see, like, associating that with grass. I actually, it's vegetal I, I kind of get it. And taste like sugar. Mm. Okay, I get it. But also, like, I'm, I don't know. I am very pleased with uh this one as opposed to some of the other red bulls i've had wasn't there a watermelon one at one point in time i have no idea but i despise watermelon flavors, yeah this one blows so, like, some of the seasonings out of the seasonal flavors out of the water what were the other flavors we've done um green apple we did green apple that one was not well good, it wasn't right? green no, apple i'm sorry it was um it was technically oh what was it um dragon fruit but it was just green apple yeah, oh yeah, the I dragon fruit one I did not really like that much. I actually like the dragon fruit. I don't like. I know they have had a full on green apple, and that one is no good. I honestly, as as someone who just despises green apple in general, um, you Can know, we talk it, about what we're talking about right now. Oh, it's it's um, shout out to Hi for asking us to um, review Red Bull flavors. Here's the new seasonal winter edition. Winter twenty twenty one. I. I enjoy a lot of red bulls seasonal flavors and this is no exception um i don't think it's necessarily bad i just think no. it tastes very much of another like drink that i can't put my finger on like uh, kool-aid type ass. of deal <laughs> it tastes no, like a like a kool-aid type of type of situation mm -hmm. like a juice yeah, box I, uh i guess i can see that like, i've had this inside of a juice box before mm-hmm I like it a lot. I think as far as um, as far as berry flavors translated into drinks, and I know that pomegranate's not a berry. Don't come at me on this one, uh, but it applies sure it to is. my point. Um, my favorite fruit flavors are ones where I feel like I can taste the not always pleasant part of the experience too, like the seed. I feel like I can taste the pomegranate seed itself in this, and I really like that because it reminds me of the Arizona tea uh raspberry flavor where it tastes like a fuzzy raspberry huh i don't know i, I think it does that. have there it does have the same kind of fruit textural taste that is present with like when you drink something you're like man that tastes like a fuzzy raspberry or a fuzzy peach mm -hmm. like it, it does have there is a textural taste to it which makes no sense but it's a thing it's not a texture like it doesn't have a texture to it yeah no absolutely no texture at all but the taste it has feels like it has a texture. Yeah, it's a textural taste for sure. And I am a huge fan of stuff like that. I really like when flavors just come together. I can get behind that. Couldn't really explain what I mean. I just I feel like a lot of the time and sugar is a big thing of it, right? Where it's like people associate sugar with so much of different things flavor that when yeah. it comes across as like something like this where it's not that at all i really uh i really enjoy the different element of it i mean i still think that sugar is definitely a big part of the flavor here <laughs> oh without a doubt without a doubt but it's not just kind of the fruit flavor and sugar it is kind of the fruit flavor and sugar but more of the fruit flavor than i usually end up catching from things like this i do i i do find myself as a bit of a bit of a flavor head mm -hmm. um and I think that's part of the reason I'm not really a big sugar eater mm -hmm. is because I, I like to I like to taste the other flavors. Real flavor heads. No. Yeah. <laughs> real flavor heads out here licking bark. I fucking... almost said real flavor heads move in silence like lasagna, but that doesn't make <laughs> any sense. No, but they do. Uh, amazing. <laughs> God, I love Lil Wayne. Can I, can I just can I just can I, can I just. He's just something special. You got to appreciate Lil Wayne. I mean, he's not a good person, right? 
I don't like, think he is, like, no. Didn't he, like, do something, like, pretty cancelable recently? Yeah, probably. I feel like he, like... I, I don't want to accuse him of anything, but I feel like no, he said yeah. some shit. I feel like he said some, like, transphobic oh, shit or something recently. I don't know if it was that, but he was against Black Lives Matter. As a That'll member. do it. Oh, that, that might be it. Man, that guy, like, that sucks. Mm-hmm. No, a lot of people were pissed about it. Can't imagine why, you know. Yeah, but, it's also one of those things where it's not like I ever held Lil Wayne to, like, a high ethical standard i just think it's funny that he said real g's move in silence like lasagna mm-hmm. <laughs> um it's a really uh, it's a it's a moving line it, it maybe she it's will powerful it has it has a power that i don't think people were ready for maybe she won't uh but shit then again maybe she will really g- great very g- good pointing out of a, a little binary there uh Lil wayne po- it's possible that she won't and also possible that she will it's true song song goes hard though I don't actually know that one off the top of my head. It's but... a Lil Wayne and Drake song. Oh, two people, yuck. two people who suck and don't make that good of music on a track that's not that good. No way, really. Yeah. Damn. I would have thought that the track was good with the names you were dropping there. <laughs> oh, Dr- dude. I don't... How do? How is Drake so like massively popular? I think about that every now and then, especially because like every two years, I feel like people are rediscovering that he's like grooming Millie Bobby Brown. Or, like, was for a hot minute. I don't know if he still is trying to. But, like, that was a big thing. That was a very acknowledged thing that I remember popping up in my circles a lot. Where it's like, hey, it's kind of weird that this grown-ass man is texting, like, a child. Yeah, he also groomed several people, though. That's, like, the the thing. See, and I don't... And that's, He's that's got a the sucky part. Is I don't know any of the other people that it happened to. Because I just know the one celebrity it happened to. His music's not which, good, too. Mm-hmm. It's... I think and it's very passive. I enjoyed some of it. Like I'll back in the day, Drake is was on a bunch of my playlists because he was like very listenable. Yeah, very but passive. He's not, like, very palatable. He's like, not great. If Drake's on radio and I'm in like a store, I'm not oh I gotta get Although I don't know there are many songs that make me go, Oh, I got mm-hmm. in a department store. What do you think? You guys got you guys got any if I'm in a department store, I might actually leave because of this song. No, yeah. I CMFT must be stopped. I would laugh so hard if I heard that song in a department store. Yeah, at Macy's. And Corey Taylor me? comes on the radio. <laughs> See, you motherfucker, <laughs> Come on, you funny. can't tell me that that wouldn't make you shop exclusively at Macy's from then on out. I mean, hey, that's the fragrance destination. It's true. You, you can't destination. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> Sometimes I start a sentence with the with the words, it's true. And I really just hope that I find where that sentence is going by the time I get there. And I... I got a got a little behind the scenes for you. Ten times out of ten, I I still got no idea where I'm going with that sentence, and <laughs> whenever it happens, oh, what a mess! Sorry, I just received so a text good. from my friend saying I'm getting a quarter pounder with cheese meal on the way to your house. Uh oh, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> it kind of sounds like you got a surprise guest. <laughs> I, d- I maybe. I don't really want McDonald's. I, like, is that for? I don't really want McDonald's. Is that I don't for know me? that it was for I you. I think. It was no, for I'm just them. gonna put my phone on. I'm just gonna put my phone on the bed. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> when you get a knock on the door in like 15 minutes, you'll know why. I Sometimes you. You know. You know what? You know what I got on recently. Oh what? Uh, HBO Max. Ooh. Oh, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> no, no, I've I've considered for a hot minute at this point just because I have enough shows that are available on HBO Max that I've been Holy like... Holy shit, it's awesome. Maybe I should actually invest it. I mean, like, I could watch The Sopranos, like, easily. Yeah, and that's I like, don't know how I thought it wasn't that good of a streaming service. I think it's because... It's literally so sick. Isn't it famous for having, like, the worst UI, though? Um, it wasn't that bad, but maybe maybe it's gotten better over time. Um, but I also was using it on my TV, so mm, I don't know enough. about like phones and desktop and stuff. Um, I remember but, hearing yeah, I that could... its UI was um, laughably bad at times. I didn't get H. <laughs> I didn't get HBO Max, but I had a friend come over who had HBO Max, and they logged in and didn't log out. Ah, that's so, so I have the temporary HBO Max. <laughs> yeah, I have I have HBO Max on one device, kind of. That's the way to do it, honestly. <laughs> Which is, it is the way to do it. Um, yeah, and it's really, really good. I, I really enjoy it. I've been watching a lot of Joe Para talks with you. It's it's so calming. I love that show. It's so great, and it's wonderful to have it all available on streaming. 
instead of having to like open the Google Drive with the torrent link. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not that you would do that, of course. Well, it's just like uh, the, the HBO Max has all the Adult Swim shows, which is really nice because Adult Swim shows are really hard to get your hands on otherwise because Honestly. they don't really press any DVDs, so you can't really get a lot of them like a DVD format or even Blu-ray. Uh, and they also don't stream anywhere except HBO Max now. So mm-hmm. I remember a friend of mine, um, uh, for legal reasons, this is a joke, uh, was talking about how much he pirated certain different uh, people's media. And mm-hmm. he's like, you know, I don't feel bad about it because it's impossible for me to actually get it here. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I guess I, I guess I understand that. That's how like that, that's how with like HBO Max with like Adult Swim shows. For the longest time, so many of them were literally only available if you could watch them on live TV when they were airing or if you would like torrent them because they just they didn't they didn't print them. They don't press a lot of their shows, uh, which sucks. But now they're on HBO Max and I've been watching Joe Paratox with you. I think it's really fun and relaxing. Um, nice. It's a good time. He's just he's just it's just, it's wholesome. It's a little goofy and it's fun. Uh, yeah, they also have just like new movies like you can just watch movies in the theater like you can just watch dune that that actually um i you know in hindsight i think i got access to hbo max in the same way that you did was a friend came in and logged in um Mm -hmm. because that's how i watched malignant which actually was a really fun movie yeah i don't know i i kind of want to watch dune it's i got like two more days and i've just never felt that much pressure before in my life (laughs) <laughs> uh, oh, also, they have all the Studio Ghibli movies, so Mari and I are watching through those now, because I have I have a lot of them on Blu-ray, uh, but I just don't have all of them. So we watched Ponyo yesterday. Nice. It's it's pretty fun. I've never watched a single Studio Ghibli movie, and every now and then I feel bad about that, because I know they're, like, a really, like, important thing for a lot of people I know. Um, yeah. And then for me, it's just, like, a thing that I'm aware of. Like, Nina loved them. And I have just never seen them, and I'm like, yep, that's uh, it's just how life is sometimes. And, you know, I, I don't know, I feel a little bad about it. Some, someday I'll watch one of them, I'm sure. I think Howl's Moving Castle is, like, really high on Nina's watch list, so. I think Howl's Moving Castle is pretty good. Uh, so, so actually, Mari and I were talking about this last night. Since we're, like, working through all of them, we're going to... Uh, You're going to make a tier list? We're make, we're each making tier lists, oh. yeah. Um. Who knows? Maybe that'll be like podcast bonus content. Maybe we'll get some Mari content. Can I be honest? I feel oh. like though tier lists feel like really like basic D list content in a lot of ways. I really love seeing them though because it's really fun yeah. seeing someone rank things that they enjoy. It's it is fun, and I feel like especially it's got to be something like with like the Ghibli movies. We could just go over this. 20 of them max mm-hmm. we could just knock them out real quick yeah. like oh yeah i like this one it's good there but like it, it, and it's not like contentious or trying to like make a statement about how other people should feel i feel like that's the fun kind of tier list when you're like oh yeah i think my s plus tier my number one is probably like princess mononoke because oh i liked it a lot when i was a kid it was like the first anime i saw that had like you know like more adult themes like had like blood and fighting in it and that was the first time i saw that outside of you know like sailor moon which really wasn't that dark at all or you know yeah and um yeah, so I feel like, yeah, but I just kind of always had a soft spot for it. And then, you know, Mario's like, oh, I like Spirited Away. I'm like, there's no, there's no wrong answers. Everyone's just having a good time. Mm-hmm. It is nice having, like, a no wrong answers type of situation like that. It, it's yeah. honestly, dare I say, even funnier when there's people that have very strong opinions about the fact that there are wrong answers. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things as... So this is actually a good transition point, too. Um... But as a longtime Pokemon fan and used to be Pokemon content creator, Mm -hmm. uh, people take like if you're like, oh, yeah, my favorite games are probably like for me, I I like Gen 3 the most because I had the most positive memories with it. It wasn't my first. The first ones I played with Pokemon Silver, but the first one I played and really was like old enough to get it and like understand it and like dive into the mechanics was like Pokemon Ruby. So I'm like, yeah, I like Gen 3 the most. Um, And there are people who are like wrong. It's actually not the best. So optimally speaking, it's probably going to have to be Pokemon Platinum because I had them. And you're like, dude, (laughs) it doesn't matter. You know that optimally your childhood favorite actually is not the best. I'm like, it's all good. It's all like, like, actually, I think that heart gold. So silver is like factually the best because and you're like, look, man, it's not that deep. Like, I get it. I get it. I'm not telling you that they think they're the best. But I'm not telling you that you don't like heart gold and soul silver the most i'm telling you that i like this the most i'm not telling you what you like the most because what i say isn't 
what you have to think. No, it actually is. But I feel like but, that's a huge disconnect. That, that's a huge disconnect to, within like, like what I think. Well, in a lot of online spaces, especially in like areas like YouTube, people are like, no, what I say is what you have to think. Because the way that like a lot of like commentary channels and stuff produce content and put it out, there's like a disconnect for a lot of younger people where they're like, no, I don't think that, but I have to think that now because someone else told me that. Mm -hmm. My favorite YouTuber said that he doesn't like this movie that I used to like. I guess I'm not going to like it anymore. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's that's the, the thing. And like, it, I feel like you just gotta. It's not, it, part it of that is you. part of that is also like this acceptance that this is. A, I think it's a disconnect, and and I'm I, I find myself being guilty of this as well every now and again. Of <laughs> in especially in the case of a lot of content creators, when they are stating an opinion or giving a review or talking about something that they're into, because of like just how people talk. They state it as fact, and I think that for a lot of young people, it's very easy to fall into the trap yeah. of that is then 100%. fact, regardless of like I say a lot of things as fact that are very clearly not facts. What? Like I know, I know, hard to believe. Me, I know, we guilty? spent about a year and a half on the podcast with me yelling at everything you said because of that. Exactly, exactly, and it just it's I think that it's very easy for consumers to just accept. Uh, Except these things fact when they're designed to be opinions stated as fact for the purpose of content or uh, yeah especially as a kid too especially like when, as a kid. when i was doing pokemon stuff like the average age of my followers was probably like 14 you know there were some adults there were like a lot of kids and there were some kids who were like nine they'd be like they hop on twitch and be like i'm eight and i'm like oh my god you shouldn't be here this is literally i put the mature thing on here because i say bad words a lot but i also can't force you not to be here um mm -hmm. yeah uh, but anyway, there was like a lot of younger people and they would oftentimes be like, no, this is wrong. You, you said that you like Stantler the best, but actually he's his stats aren't even that good. And like they're like the, as a Pokemon, like the typing of normal. I'm like, it's not about that. I think the deer is cool. Yeah, I God liked it when I was you six. like one that you just happen to like. I was five and it was a deer and I thought it was cool. Yes, I think that Sawsbuck. And Xerneas are cooler looking deer Pokemon, but when I was fucking five, they weren't in existence. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have time to grow an attachment to them. <laughs> so I still like Stantler. It's not, I'm not just going to jump. Like, it's, don't be weird. I love the little deers. I think they're great. You know, Chopper from One Piece. That's my guy. Stantler. That's my guy. Illegal. I just, that's, if I, if I had a first owner, it would absolutely be a deer. And it would look an awful just, lot like Stantler. No, probably not like Stantler. Okay. Just like a deer. But just because I've always liked like deer things. Um, you know, I was going to say this is a... Yeah, no, so we got we got to talk about the Pokemon remakes now, I suppose. Okay. I'm yeah, down do that. I don't know much about them, unfortunately. Uh, they did a remake of Diamond and Pearl. I heard it was uh, I've good. I've been playing through it. I've heard it's it... really fun, yeah. I've it's, heard... it's got pretty much everything I, I necessarily wanted from it. Um, it's just a further reminder. Because they, <laughs> they said... Bad bitches only. <laughs> when, I'm sorry. When, Damn, when I can't believe does, Pokemon said so, that. All, all, of the, all of, like, it's one of those things where there are so many throughout the game, like, adult female characters that are attractive, yet still the community chooses to only be horny about the children and the Pokemon. Mm. And it's absurd to me. Like, why is there? An, what I'm hearing is that you're mad that there's no, there's not more Professor whatever uh, Rule Thirty Four. Um, his name is Professor Rowan, and it I'm depends not really on which game it him. is. So that's why. Yeah, I said but I'm ta I just was talking about Diamond and Pearl. Though. All right, fucker, listen um, here. Damn. I, and to be fair, there got... is like you know, like a lot of people are down bad for like Cynthia, but true. I'm just saying, like the the aroma ladies. Um. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> But yeah, it's just you? one of those things that's always weird to me because I'm like, oh, yeah, look at that, like, uh, like attractive adult woman. And then people are like, yeah, no, I want to fuck that dog thing. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, we want to fuck the dog thing. All right. Well, Dan, <gasps> what? <laughs> that was a really half hearted defense there, Dan. What? Huh? What? I don't know which dog thing we're talking about, so. Lucario. It doesn't matter oh, which one yeah. they're talking about. No, nah, Lucario is weak sauce. I was talking Get about Lucario. Here. Get out of here. Uh, I agree. I think Lucario's weak sauce. 
I think it's. Oh, I feel like there's a lot of I overrated Pokemon. Don't come back to me until you've seen the Tangela Rule Thirty Four. I don't even want to see it. I don't want to talk to you. You. If I don't want to see Tangela Rule Thirty Four. Why would I want to see Rule Thirty Four? So see, don't Jackson, act like you and I can talk. You and I can have yeah, a conversation. Yeah, exactly. We can have a conversation as equals here. Exactly. Unlike Noah, who's over here. Noah, go sit at like the baby Lucario, table. Lucario. Okay. At the kids' table. Oh, I like Gardevoir. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here. <laughs> no, it's like I don't even know what you're talking about. Who's a Gardevoir? I thought you said Carnivine, and I'm like, how did you know that? <laughs> oh, oh my shit, this god, guy knows Carnivine. Same thing. Carnivine was my favorite. Yeah, Carnivine's sick as hell. Actually, I was really bummed out hard when I get, realized though. that he sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, Carnivine's kind of hard to get. I always thought when I was a kid that Carnivine was like the evolution, like a, another evolutionary branch of like Weeping Bell. Mm-hmm. Um. I thought for the longest time that that was like how it worked. I it's not. There is it? are too many plant Pokemon. I I think that Carnivine is like a standalone, which always yeah, bummed me so out too. because Carnivine is I I wanted before. I wanted my Carnivine to be actually like a force of nature, but there is no way at all that that can happen. So you know what Pokemon I love. I'm a Buizel head. You guys like Buizel? <laughs> what the fuck is a Buizel? Bro, come on. Oh, I actually really like Weasel. Weasel's adorable. I, it's cute as fuck. I used to love Weasel. When I was a kid, I loved Weasel and I didn't like Floatzel. No, Floatzel looks Weasel's too evolution. smug. He looks too smug. I used to hate Floatzel. Buizel. And I used to only love Weasel. Oh my gosh. I was a big Weasel Look at head. that little man. I know, right? It's phenomenal. And he swims by spinning its tails. It's amazing. Um, I have a, I have a Weasel on, on my uh, b- bubble. Because he blows bubbles. Okay, a bubble weasel. I get it, I get it. In the anime. So I have a weasel on my team right now in the new Pokemon games, and, and he's he's great. Um, uh, but I, I used to I used to hate Floatzel. I was like, man, I'm not a, I'm not a Floatzel guy. Weasel's way cooler. And I, I've come around on that. I've since I've since accepted Floatzel. Proud of you. As you're and I've now savior. become a Floatzel. Like, the new the Floatzel appreciator has logged on. Um, and it just it also seems like a nice guy. I used to think it was smug. But I don't. I don't think Floatzel is as smug looking anymore. I think it looks, still looks kind of smug. As a kid, I used to bring literally like a bu- like in my first playthrough, I brought a Buizel like with me all the way to like the Elite Four because I was like, I'm not evolving this. This is cooler. Fuck you. Um, I, but now I I do love that though. But now the the Floatzel appreciator has in fact logged on now. That that's probably for the best. Yeah, I think it's. I think I, there's nothing wrong with Floatzel. I think it's cute. Uh, yeah, but I just I, there's a lot of really cool Pokemon in Gen Four, and it, the remakes are really fun. The Underground's really cool. I've just been having a great time with it, and yeah, I, I, I'm 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 satisfied. I'm happy with it. I'm glad to hear. I I feel cool. like usually when you give us the report of uh, hey, it's the new Pokemon remake, it usually feels like a generally positive experience, and I I really do like that. It it's nice. Oh to yeah, see, I mean that's kind of you know that's kind of the thing. Like they they don't usually drop the ball too hard. And when they do, it's never like I'm going to cry about it. I'm always just like, you should probably cry eh. about it, though. Have you considered it? Yeah, I feel like a lot of Pokemon fans are really in the camp of just like, oh, things aren't completely optimal in the new game. This will be something I hate forever. I feel like now correct me if I'm wrong. Pokemon fans both want everything to be perfectly optimized every single time a new game drops, but also nothing changes whatsoever. Kind of. Um, they want all the things of all the games brought back at all times, um, but they don't want any changes also. Yeah, that makes so sense. So it's kind of... And there are like genuinely like some big problems with like a lot of the games, like uh, when they didn't bring all the Pokemon into Yeah, since the that's generation like 8. the biggest deal about Pokemon is the fact that you can still yeah. have OG Pokemon late in the game if you really want well, to. Well, no, it's not... Th- well, the pro- the, I would say the problem is the OG Pokemon, but, um, <laughs> no, like literally because they shoehorn, they're like, Hey man, you want a Geodude? No, I don't want enough, another fucking Geodude. I've had 12 goddamn Geodudes since I was fucking two. <laughs> it sucks ass. It's a rock with arms. Stop shoving it down everything. God, it's shit. Like people are like, yo man, Gengar is so cool. Why? It's a purple circle. It's not fucking cool. Shut up, Gengar fans. I like Gengar, but exclusively just as like. In the way that I like all the ghost Pokemon because they're kind of neat because they all have like really yeah. weird lore concepts to them. I just don't like most of like the original 150 that are completely like 
shoved into every game and given half the attention. Like in Gen 6, when they were like, yeah, we're bringing, like, five minutes into the game, you get a Charmander, a Squirtle, or a Bulbasaur. Right after you get your initial starter, and then they're like, also, the Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulb- Bulbasaur can Mega Evolve. Your starter can't, by the way. That's so yeah, stupid. they literally have a, a base stat total of minimum 100 better than your starter, and you're giving them at the same point. And there's no reason to you... not just use that to win the game. Exactly. They, and that's the thing. They're like, yeah. And people are like, oh my god, Charizard. I fucking love Charizard. It's cool. Shut up. No one cares. I was going to say, why would you ever use your base starter then if they were like that much better? I don't know. Maybe. maybe and that's, uh... that, that was one of the big problems with Gen 6. I love Gen 6. I think it had like some of the most like amazing Pokemon and designs. And there was some really cool stuff going on with Mega Evolution. But I think that the game like just ended up not being very good because they reserved mega evolution pretty much exclusively for the original 150 pokemon unfortunate and you're just like this is really not i don't know i feel like it just wasn't shining because they kept get, they were like yeah we know we introduced new cool pokemon here but we're just gonna play it safe and give blastoise the new form mm. it was disheartening i get the idea of playing it safe but it does bum me out especially with something that's like as loved a franchise as pokemon where like they can basically get away with murder and people will still buy the game next time a new one comes out because and then the murder they choose to get away with is is making the game showing charge less enjoyable <laughs> yeah it, it's well it's not take the murder they choose to get away with is not taking risks mm-hmm. and the risks they do take are like hey we're only going to include half the pokemon until you pay us 30 dollars more like that's not really that's not the kind of risk that was cool. The kind of risk that would have been cool was like, I don't know, letting me mega evolve the Delphox. Stantler Mega Evolution when? They gave Stantler an evolution, so I have to be quiet for at least five years. I don't think you have to. That's the rule? I think it's the rule. Stantler heads finally got something. So you have your bylaw required to not ever complain again. Like it's just like Stantler heads haven't gotten a victory since like uh, 1997. So it's kind of like we just Stanleyheads just take these. Okay, so the um, 97 made me think of uh, big. Bear with me here. This is a big convoluted thing. Uh, I've been learning about Five Nights at Freddy lore uh, recently because um, Nina knows a small amount about it. And we watched this week for the horror podcast. We watched Willie's Wonderland. Um, oh, which is the definitely not Five Nights at Freddy's wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We definitely didn't do that. And I gotta be honest, y'all, it's really fun. <laughs> it's so bad, <laughs> but it's really fun. Have you ever wanted to just watch a movie where Nick Cage just kind of does stuff? That's all Nick Cage. Honestly, movies. no, no, really. I'm not a Nick Cage head. Okay, fair. I'm enough. not an anti Nick Cage head, but I've never wanted to just be like. Like, that's, that's not enough to bring me to the table. You also got to put in some roast beef or something. Then I'll show up to dinner. So the uh, the animatronics aren't enough for you? Um, The fact that Nick maybe. Cage doesn't speak once throughout the entire movie isn't enough for you? That's a negative. That is it a negative? Because yeah, when he talks, it's the funniest part. But his entire acting is just physical acting at this point now. I just want to hear him say weird things, though. Yeah, no, I've heard, I've heard that Willy's Wonderland is, like, in, in, the, so, in the camp of so bad it's good. I don't even know that I agree that it's so bad it's good. I just think it's, I don't think it's not great. I'll admit to that. But it's not (laughs) bad enough for me to be like, oh, that's so bad. I don't know. It's, I refer to a few movies, I feel like, as modern B movies that maybe don't deserve it as much. But this is a B movie. And it's really fun. It's just goofy. You know what I like about movies that are so bad they're good? Hmm. Hmm. They're... They're not objectively like that. True. Like, if you were to show someone who doesn't know anything about the room, the room. Oh, no. They probably would just be like, they would probably just be like, yeah, this is just not very good. 100%. Yeah. They'd be like, this is just a poorly made movie. But because of, like, all the lore that has developed over years, like, it has become so bad it's good within the context of, like, the cultural setting that we watch it in. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, for Halloween, um... My friend or our friend Rob mm-hmm. had a a movie marathon of the um what we refer to as the Robert Kino series, um, which is a series of just bad horror movies by a Welsh director named Andrew something I don't remember his last name. Um, 
and they're just about like the haunted doll and it like is cursed and there's like five movies and they just keep getting worse um and we watched them we watched all of them and like they 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 fell into that camp of so bad it's good but i feel like if we were to just show them to someone they would be like this is just bad but like because we've made so many jokes about it and we call it the robert kino series and there's like memes that like we've distributed within like the 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 discord server and we talk about it in like a a context when we watch them we're like yeah these are hilarious but someone who isn't familiar with all the jokes and the in in uh in jokes and the re- references we make about the Robert Kino series mm-hmm. would probably just be like, yeah, this is just a series of shitty horror movies. You know what? I had never thought of that, but that makes a whole lot of sense, especially, yeah, I... especially like the room. I've never seen the room, so I have no like love for it. And everyone I know who loves it is just, I have already just hit the point of, yeah, I mean, people like the room, you know, like everyone likes it. We all know it. Um, but I guess it is just a shitty movie that only is funny because of its greater context, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's the, the one of the best things about the So Bad They're Good movies is, like, we can kind of decide what's going to be so bad it's good. Like, if as a podcast we wanted to be like, yeah, find a the shitty B movie and be like, this is one that's so bad it's good and start making jokes about it and start, like, making references to it, we could make it a, like, a, a podcast adjacent thing that we're just like, yeah... We watch this movie and make fun of it. And like every year we could watch like, I don't know, fucking like Mega Shark 6 and be like, yeah, that's the one. Yo, what are you doing? Uh, Peeking although... in on my family traditions. <laughs> See? Well, also, though, I will say that like uh, sometimes the movies that are so bad, they're good. Try and shoehorn that cultural context to the point where it doesn't work. Like Sharknado. I was about to say, you're, you're mm-hmm. talking about Sharknado. I'm talking about Sharknado because Sharknado does the thing where they're like, they, they they understand that things that are so bad they're good are made and then they have to be culturally understood as such. Mm-hmm. But it forced itself too much into like enacting a culture that didn't exist. It's kind of like when you see those ads like before like a YouTube video that are like, hey, h- how do you know your mattress isn't very good? Because of this, we got a, the purple mattress, we put a raw egg under it and then throw a guy on it and the raw egg doesn't break. That's how you know your mattress is good. You're like, no, you've invented that metric. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean shit. I've never been concerned about whether or not there's compressive force put on some small object underneath my mattress. That's never been a factor. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, not once. You made that factor up and now you're using that metric to judge everything else. I guess. And I feel like that's what Sharknado tried to do. They're like, we have like a porn star in our movie. You're mm. like... Okay, but that's not that's not why the room's funny. Mm-hmm. Like that's not why people find you know these like B movies funny. You just you're trying to make it that though. Yeah, I do like how it does show that some people do believe that that's why those movies are special. And it, it did work. I mean, Sharknado worked, right? Yeah. Like they they made mm-hmm. money and they kept making money. They made sequels and people kept watching them. And like there was a group, uh, there was a pretty strong group of people who were like, yeah, no, I'm a like, yeah, I think the Sharknado movies are hilarious. I remember before I realized that it was all, like, incredibly on purpose, I thought that it was just a very bad movie that got popular. Because mm-hmm. it was one of those things where it's like, well, they definitely leaned into it on purpose later. But right now, it's like the sci-fi network, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, I believe. I think, I think the first one, they didn't know it would be as big as it was, and then it went downhill. But, like, I feel like the first Sharknado was still definitely in that, so like, trying to make itself so bad it's good. But, like, after that one, it just, like, they immediately, like, just blew the, uh, blew the gates off of it and just, uh, like, just ran it into the ground. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. And, yeah, and they feel, I feel like they tried to, like, they tried to, like, artificially create that culture that exists around these movies. But, like, when's the last time you heard of someone doing a screening of Sharknado? Not... Not Maybe a long d- time. It doesn't happen. When was the last time you heard of someone doing a screening of the room? Like, shit, they did one at my, uh, at Mari's college, like, three weeks ago. <laughs> like, it's not, like, they they do it all the time, all over the place. Because people have a passion for it, and they feel like they can make their own enjoyment out of it, whereas I feel like some of the ones that are forced don't let you have, you don't feel that same sense of, uh, I guess, like, satisfaction from it. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. That's my theory. Anyway, let's find a bad movie and then make it like the podcast so bad it's good official yeah. thing we talk about. What do you what do you think? What, what movie what do, you think? Which, like, what one, movie do we do have? Like what are we I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's gotta be a little bit obscure and just like actually bad. 
Hmm. That's well, be bad, but we'll not be googling offensive. bad obscure movie. I, well, no, I, I feel like it can't be forced. Like if we force mm-hmm. it right now, it won't work. It'll be a Sharknado. But if we we just gotta like keep keep your heads up, you know. Are you sure eyes, we don't want to just peeled. commit to Trog? Hold up, what's Trog? <laughs> I don't know, but it's from the seventies. I'm what's checking right now. Um, Who's Trog? Oh my gosh, it looks awful. Um, there's no summary of these movies. It's just Joan Crawford is in it. The last, it's the last movie Joan Crawford was in. A sympathetic anthropologist uses drugs and surgery to try and communicate with a primitive troglodyte who was found living in a local cave. This sounds so bad. Maybe to you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That That's on me. Did we talk about the House of Gucci movie at all? I Michelle's real excited about it. Was about to say something very mean about it. I was I also <laughs> going to say something very mean no, go about for it. it. I don't. I I have no. I have no thoughts on it whatsoever. I think it because I I had really messaged stupid. Noah. Stupid. I. Yeah, I messaged Noah about it. I was like, hey, do they know that having everyone in the movie be like, hey, it's a me, you're Mario Gucci, sounds dumb? Because it, they, that's what, like, the entire movie is that accent spoken in American English. Like, if you're going to make the movie not in Italian, don't do the cheese, don't make everyone do a bad Italian accent. That's not even, like, halfway trying. It just sounds like a whole bunch of New Yorkers in a room. And, like, it's, it just doesn't. It doesn't look, I don't know, maybe I'm missing it, but like, and maybe when you watch the whole thing, it doesn't come across like that, but the trailers do. And on, and that, I think that's the issue, right? The trailers, I don't know if this is going to be a serious movie or not, but the trailers do not imply it seems that it's hilarious. going to be serious. The trailers are too Whedon-y, especially with the uh, father-son House of Gucci line or whatever it is. I was pretty sure it was supposed to be a serious movie. Oh, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying though, is like. It doesn't seem I like feel it. like it is supposed to be, but everything that I keep seeing from it is really stupid one linery. Yeah, they're like, hey, uh, holy mm-hmm. cannoli, uh, yeah, yeah, your, your papa's gone off the deep end with his fi- uh, fiscal em- embezzling. Mm. Like, what? Is that supposed to be funny or not? But I yeah, I, 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 like I said, I have no feelings about it. I just know Michelle's real excited about it. I mean, uh, it might be great. It might be. It might also be terrible. I'd I just. Fine. I feel like it, I'm worried that it, I don't know, I just, from the trailer, the accents, the, the actors doing the accents don't sound good. Like, Adam Driver doing an Italian accent is just not his acting at, at its best. Yeah. And I don't think that's a hot take. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty hot take. Yeah, I mean, obviously when he was in Silence, that was like, everyone was like, man, that guy is Italian as hell. That's, that's a joke, because they were Portuguese <laughs> and also in Japan. <laughs> I was just gonna let it sit there. People were like, "Yeah, this silence movie is pretty good." Martin Scorsese, but did you consider giving Adam Driver an Italian accent? Because that would have been a chef's a kiss. Bada bing, bada da boop. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> what? A, speaking of movies, did any of you get to see Last Night in Soho? No, not yet. Uh, Nina and I are planning. On, well, we we're planning on seeing it on Friday, and it fell through. We we're planning on seeing it soon, though. Is it still showing near you? I don't know, actually. Well, uh, didn't out. it come out like? Didn't it come out like this week? It yeah, it sure as fuck did. Like within the last two weeks, uh, yeah. and it's not showing anywhere anymore. Is no. it bad? I've heard I don't good things. Think so I've heard nothing but good things. It's yeah, no, it came out October twenty ninth. It came out a couple weeks ago. Part. It came out a little bit ago, so it, it did take oh, a bit. No. Is that but a Rotten Tomato seventy five percent though? Uh, uh, Rotten Tomato seventy five. Yeah. A Rotten Tomato seventy five percent is a uh, Rotten Tomato seventy five is really bad though. Um, Cause like, they'll be like, hey, here comes uh, Tony Stark's dick jerk off. It's 100% for eight months straight. Holy shit. This is, uh, it's not showing. Yeah, it disappeared instantly. Weird. I thought it, yeah, I didn't even Super know it came weird. out. With, I saw a trailer less for than it. A month. It, came out, it came out on the 29th and it's already gone. It's insane. I was trying to go see it and it's just, it's just gone. Um, I, I literally thought it was either not out yet or about to come right out. Now. I got HBO Max. It looked, it it's looked, not it, on HBO Max. I mean, I'm going to see it because... Oh, God it's one of my uh it's one of my favorite it Edgar Wright, one of my favorite uh directors. But Yeah, that's why it. Nina wanted to see it too. She loves everything Edgar Wright's ever touched that the, and was super excited about it. I'm probably gonna Damn. get canceled for this. Is that the is that the hot fuzz guy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I thought yeah. it was the hot fuzz shot of the his, dead, but I didn't want to sound like an idiot. It's outside of his like usual style, right? His wheelhouse, like, if you will. His wheelhouse, thank you, that's the right word. Outside What's of his usual wheelhouse. wheelhouse it's a thr- it's a thriller like i and also like i don't love thrillers but i don't 
care. I like the director enough that I'm going to go see it because it's it's his work. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really disappointed. I'm hoping that uh, so Michelle's still part of the uh, the WGA, um, and so she, we get a bunch of screeners every year. Uh, quick question: What does that mean? Uh, Writers Guild of America. Cool. Thank you. It's the union. Uh, it's also it's also like air quote to the academy. I mean, no reason to. Uh... If she plans on ever doing anything, no reason to leave the union. So exactly, it makes sense um, for her to still be there. Uh, My Hero Academy. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh. But so we get a bunch of screeners. So we just got we, like, and it's coming up on the beginning of Os- or on Oscar season. So we're starting to get them like regularly now. And so I'm really hoping we get it in the mail in the next couple of weeks. But I was just so disappointed that it was out so fucking quickly. It came yeah. out and disappeared again. Oh, Which honestly may be because it's bad, right? Like Google has I, like ninety percent of users like this movie, but as, like the I ratings never trust from critics the aren't one. great. The well, ratings from critics aren't. Here's the thing, though, and this is I'm not trying to say critics just don't know what people want, but also a lot of the time critics will shit on movies that are still very fun. They just like, especially like, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that they're holding Edgar Wright to a higher standard than they're going to hold other movies to because he's Edgar That's very Wright. Fair. So. Not to be like, uh, yeah, so uh, a 75% for Edgar Wright is actually a, a 90% for insert director I don't like here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know. Even if it even if it's not great, there's a lot to be enjoyed about a not as great but still fun movie. I mean, let's yeah, let's be real. Uh, Hot Fuzz and um, Hot Fuzz and all those are not great movies, but they are very fun movies, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm really I'm going to be I'm really sad that it disappeared real quickly. Uh, Dune is also out and everyone's talking about that as well. And I, I really do Dune. need to see that as well. Uh, I, I got two days HBO left on Max. HBO Max to watch it. There I do. Go. I am going to we have and, HBO Max uh, for free right now. And oh, as someone who said like 10 times that I want to watch Dune, I'm going to guarantee you in the next two days, I'm not fucking watching that shit. You kidding me? <laughs> I mean, it's like 17 hours long. You kidding long. me? It's like two hours long. Down? Oh, I'll, I'll watch like three Studio Ghibli movies in the entirety of Joe Parra talks with you. I don't have time for Dune. Yeah, you can do it's like Dune. two hours. I feel that though. Um, yeah, Nina I have twelve I... hours in Pokemon so far, but it's like a <laughs> lot of Dune time. Nina and I just finished watching uh, the entirety of Lost, and mm. the amount of free time that we now technically have to pick up another show is like jaw droppingly huge. And let me also tell you, the amount of time I'm willing to commit to a show right now is incredibly low. Dropping low. low? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. This guy doesn't have time for Dune also, and I, I respect that. Here's the thing, right? I don't plan on watching Dune because I don't... And I'm not Gigantic asterisks. I don't care about Dune, not because I don't think it's going to be good, just because it's not important to me at this moment that I get to see it. You know, it's not like mm-hmm. like Star Wars I grew up with. Lord of the Rings, I grew up with. I get it, and that's exciting for me. But I wouldn't watch another Lord of the Rings thing because I think that it's done, and I think they bungled it with The Hobbit bad enough that I don't want to see another, like, adaptation. Mm -hmm. And then Star Wars is just like, yeah, I mean, it's always going to be not that great. And I know that people are saying, well, this is going to be, like, to sci-fi what Lord of the Rings was. No, shut up. But they're still making Star Wars? They're making more Star Wars? Eventually they will be, yeah. There's no. Oh, way you said not. you said that like this is gonna be. And I thought you talk, were talking about like a new thing that was about to come out. No, but like, um, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, this is going to replace Star Wars as the great like sci-fi epic because it's going to be uh, taken no. more seriously and things like that. And well, wasn't well, the thing. Star I don't Wars think that that's based incorrect. off Dune anyway? I don't think that isn't it's Star in- Wars literally partially derivative from Dune because it came out like ten years prior. Yeah, probably. Yeah, there's honestly, the, where do you? That, <laughs> yeah, Star Wars also has spice mines. That's why they got it. It rips away from Dune. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a, there's several elements that were like were pretty straight from Dune. Not not like the entire thing, obviously. It's very independent, but like our luck pit. And yeah, worm. it's like it's it's derivative because Dune came out before and was like a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Although I mean, the movie sucked, from what I hear. The, the original movie, the original one. I know a lot of people. Oh, like oh wait, the, when you movies. say the original Dune, are you talking about the or like the yeah, that yeah the Dune, one that, the David yeah, Lynch Dune. Dune? Yeah, yeah, the one the God, David Lynch's that, worst movie. That movie's a piece of shit. <laughs> I like <laughs> David Lynch. That movie's a piece of shit. Um, this one so apparently I, is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. A lot of people I've seen criticize it for only being two hours long and being like not the full book rather than like Yeah, it's doing, the first half of the book. 
Yeah, rather than doing like the whole book in one gigantic movie because their logic was people who like Dune would sit down and watch the whole thing. <laughs> they would. But here's the thing, Them right? Dune heads. <laughs> Them dune heads, but it just reminds me of Lord of the Rings where they made the whole movie or the whole book into one movie, and then they all, uh, everyone just agreed, yeah, these actually weren't long enough, and then they immediately re released an extended edition. I am firmly like, I, I kind of miss the age of like hour and a half movie in and out, we're done. Yeah, I really that's one of the things I actually heard as a review of Dune was like. It was refreshing. Now, this isn't my take because I, I haven't seen it yet. But I have I heard that it was um, refreshing because it is not... It's long, but it's not, like, insanely long. It's not, it's not it's a three-hour movie. movie. Yeah. And it's not, like, every ten seconds they break the tension with a quip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel... That's another I, then, criticism I saw, in fact. Yeah, I, well, that's the thing. Like, I, I heard, like, kind of as a, not a criticism, but as, a like, a compliment where it's kind of, like... It's not an adult, it's not a kid movie, it's not a teenager movie, it's for, like, an, an adult. Like, it's not broken down, like, it's not like every ten seconds they're like, is that giant sandworm right behind me? <laughs> oh, he's right behind me, isn't he? That's my cue to run. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's not... Now, I know the, the Marvel hater has, in fact, logged on, but, like... No, it's fine. I think there is very valid criticisms of Marvel movies in that regard. Yeah. And I think also, like, it's fair to say that, like, Marvel movies are definitely for teenagers, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and 100%. even kids, to an extent. Yeah, absolutely. A big, um, widest possible audience. Yeah, and and that's, mm-hmm. as, as superheroes, it always has been the widest possible audience, so there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But, like, I, I feel like because that has dominated our, like, blockbuster releases for the last eight, nine years, people mm-hmm. are like, holy sh- this Dune movie didn't make a joke every ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, something sad happened and no one joked about it. Like, yeah, yeah, because it's not for the widest possible audience at this point. It's actually, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say refined, but like, it's a little bit more adult and it's, it's not, it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't hold your hand in the same way. And I feel like that's, that's a nice thing to have for some movies. Not every movie, but it's nice to have movies like that. Yeah. But I feel like our blockbusters have kind of lost that a little bit. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh my gosh. What the hell was that? Fuck. Not true. True. <laughs> <laughs> Any truers in the chat right now? I'm true. I think that's the issue with, uh, and I know this is exactly what you said, so bear with me. That is definitely the issue with, like, the Marvel movie craze and superhero movies in general, is that, like, that's generally more what I direct things at when I say that I'm really just, like, sick of superhero movies and, like, Marvel movies. Because yeah, not Robert Pattinson's petulant Batman. Yeah, no, I think, I think Pattinson's <laughs> petulant Batman will be very so fun. Pe- he is so petulant, let me tell you. Shut up. For the love of God. He, he is quite disrespectful by word of mouth or action. Shut up. <laughs> but you know, like, I don't, I don't <laughs> mind when it's going to be another superhero movie that isn't pretending to be, like, all that and important mm-hmm. or anything. Because they're not, you know? They're fun. They're cool pop culture, like, pieces. But they're not, like, important. And I'm okay with that. And I think that's one thing where as much as they tend to suck, that's the nice thing about all the DC movies is they've all sucked ass and everyone acknowledges that they are oh, not yeah. good and not Dog generally shit. worth your time. Have... And yeah, I think no, that's they've... helped keep them in the realm that I wish the Marvel movies would drop back to where it's like, you know, I'm really sick of the safest conversation that I could bring up with literally anyone is so uh, how, uh, ma- what do you think of Marvel movies? Marvel? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. I'm just I'm Yeah, just tired I, I of feel the like topic. the fact that I don't like them is like one of those things that is almost like a a frequently occurring personality trait when it comes to movies where like I don't think about them ever, really. But when I'm talking about movies like it comes up because mm-hmm. it can't not come up and that's frustrating cuz I, I can't be like I think Dune sounds interesting. I like the fact that it's like a little more adult and not full of jokes and then like that statement is only something I'm saying and only something I have to say because of how widely encompassing and, like, palatable Marvel movies are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just, I mean, Disney movies as a whole, but, like, yeah, Marvel movies for sure. I don't know. I can, I can straw man some sort of Marvel fan that I can get mad at all day, but I feel like it also, it doesn't help me that I have chosen to really enjoy media that is generally not as popular. And partially that's that's even why I get into some of the things I get into, because I, I enjoy the special feeling of Haha, people don't like this as much as I do, because not as many people know about it as I do. <laughs> I'm very smart, you know, but 
I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, that's it's, definitely part of the fun. There's just something fun about it. I very much do enjoy being a hipster sometimes, but also I get very frustrated when people brush off interests that I um that I like have that I care a lot about because it's not something that people are as familiar with. So a lot of the time it's like, Oh yeah, Noah, you watch those horror movies, you know, and Dan, this is not me coming at you just to clarify. Okay. I think it is Dan. He's coming. He's got, he's going right at you. Listen, I, I think that they're like, just to throw my two cents in and then recede back into the shadows. I think there's a time and a place to be for being a hipster. And that's awesome and great. I also think there's a time and a place to be like, get that. Like, come on. Really? Come on. I think that there is a there is equal value in having your own things and being confident and comfortable and I like my things and it's okay and I don't really give a shit about the main the mainstream and also be there's a value in being like, hey, I don't really care about the mainstream, but I'm not gonna take pride in not caring about the mainstream. Like I think I think that there is there is room for both in in the world and like it's it's No. I mean it's definitely like one of those like when people say let people have fun i'm like yeah you you like stuff that sucks no, i'm just kidding i mean i watched literally all of eternals with people who liked it and just didn't say anything mean because it's not worth it it doesn't it's matter that it. much exactly but then i came on here and talked about how much it sucked because in this context in this setting you know we are able to talk about those kind of things and we're more free to because we're just like there's no you know no bad blood we're not like attacking anybody yeah because i don't really care like I, and that's why when i like talk about like how much i loathe marvel movies I don't usually point out that I don't like, like, I don't try, I don't attack people who like them or the people that watch them or typically, uh, I usually just go after the actual movie itself because that's where my problem lies. If you like them, that's fine, man. Like there, there, there's some fun parts of it and hell, maybe it means a lot to you, you know, like the same reason maybe that Princess Mononoke is my favorite Studio Ghibli movie. Like mm-hmm. th- th- that's, and that's fine. And that's why I'm not going after the people who like Marvel movies, but just like the way that they're made and the way that they have an overarching like effect on our cultural understanding of movies. Mm-hmm. But I, I also think they're waning though. Like I don't think I think they're losing a lot of steam. I would definitely Eternals agree was with that. ass. And I've everyone such, I've heard literally 50/50 on on Eternals. Like it's straight down the middle. Some people absolutely loved it. So many people absolutely hated it. Who here's absolutely the, here's loved the thing. it? I have not the, heard a good thing. <laughs> the only people who I've heard say good things are people who are complimenting the fact that it has a diverse cast and it's finally not a white person directing a Marvel movie. Not to say that it is the first time that a person of color has directed a Marvel movie, but you know what I mean? It's like, these are the things that I generally hear about. Oh yeah. I mean, that was like, and that's kind of like what my, my review of was like the other day. I was like, Marie and I got out and she was like, well, it was nice that they had an Asian woman director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's nice that they had like a couple people of color as like lead roles. And she was like, yeah, and that was the end of it because there's nothing else nice to say because yeah it's it's very important to actually get movies out there that actually have like real representation in them rather than hey it's another big jawed white guy oh but this is the nerdy white guy you know like it's important to not have that be our primary like movie community but simultaneously it really bugs me that eternals is the movie that decided to like they decided to actually give it to us with I think it sucks because why it just says something that they had to wait that long to do it. And they literally had to lump in like 10 identities at once instead of letting each individual, like, like the, the woman who was deaf in Eternals mm-hmm. uh, is in the movie for 20 minutes max. Um, and she also can hear. And I just think that's bullshit. Like that doesn't like, that's not representation. You're literally watering it all down to a three hour long movie which sucks that it's that long trying to put 10 people into it trying to include the several different identities and then kind of just getting rid of half of them for most of the movie and then just ending it without actually making any kind of change or showing anything or doing anything unique or interesting or trying at all and that's like it just sucks that it takes that long for any kind of representation and then the representation you get is half-assed because you're not given the ample like room to work with it like if the eternals had anything like the avengers where there were like individual films like individual personalities to be built up before the movie started maybe Mm -hmm. it would have meant something but they didn't do that and they didn't do that for a reason they didn't want to do that took them Mm -hmm. this long to do like it just i don't know like i i love to see like diversity in film and i love to see like inclusion Mm -hmm. of all sorts of identities in film but i feel like when you're just like 
shoehorning a whole bunch into one movie and it's a superhero movie that's part of an established thing that you've gone 40 films without, it doesn't mean anything. I feel like it's it's unfortunately half-assed. And I, I really hope that there were people who managed to like feel like like in- included and see themselves in these characters. But it just it's sad that they get a poorly like done movie with that half the energy as like a normal movie put into it as like the representation. I just I feel like they could have done better and they have a responsibility to do better. But I, I talked mm-hmm. I talked about this at length. No, I I sad. agree with you. It's though. just it, sad. It, I don't know. Is it better than nothing? Absolutely. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I don't think better than nothing should be the bar we're going for. Dan, you have any thoughts on this film, man? I. I haven't seen the movie. Like simply, simply put, I haven't seen the movie. Like I agree with all of what Jackson's saying in theory. I I don't want to attribute it to a movie that I haven't seen. Yeah, it's not. No, I, honestly, don't bother with it. It's three hours long, man. It's three. Like it's so long. I didn't. I still haven't seen Endgame because it's three goddamn hours long. Yeah, and this has like none of the uh the weight behind it. The Endgame did. That's like <laughs> they, it's and then they still chose to make it that long. Eternals is so long, it made it to this week's episode. Mm-hmm. That's that's how that's bullshit how it is. is. Um, yeah, that's that's all. New Pokemon's kind of fun though. <laughs> you can dig for fossils underground. That's oh, fun. Man. I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, a couple of things that I wanted to bring up this week, but that's fine. We're coming up on on time anyway. But fucking just real quick, not that anyone else gives a shit, but I am ridiculously excited the fucking new minecraft uh the new minecraft update comes out on the 30th and i am mad ridiculous like, what's it what's it talk got? about it for a minute though uh, come on dude the biggest, I, like I mean the biggest the biggest thing is that it adds like 128 blocks worth of world height to everything uh oh hell yeah change, changes terrain generation completely mountains are bigger the cave systems are uh the word insane the caves are insane now they're the word insane doesn't begin to cover them they are massive caverns with aquifers and like yeah. layered pools of water that go like that can have different like different heights and different structures built through them it's just it's so rad uh and i'm very excited for it and I was, i've been waiting on a world height update for like literally five years have I think this you last time they did. played the how to train your dragon dlc for like the java version because <laughs> it looks <laughs> fucking sick like the, I know the, it's um, dumb and it's like a, a tie-in, no, no, but Windows, like the Bedrock version, yeah, Windows Ten, uh, the Windows Ten version. I have yeah. not. I, I kind of low key kind of want to, but I'm also not going to spend the money on. It. Same, and but I, also, I, feel like I feel like flying around a like, dragon in Minecraft sounds like so satisfying. Well, you can do that with mods. Yeah, but I I hate mods. They're stupid and dumb, and I would never use them. Uh huh. But the DLC is but a mod. I uh, know because I click the button and it happens. I don't have to like look up anything. That's fair. I'm a boomer when it comes to mods for games. I just like I don't understand them and I never will. But when someone has them on their server, I I can understand it kind of. If they make me click a link, I can do that. Click one link, pull, pull click two links, and that's it. Two links. Yeah, I'm not. Link. I'm not. Any more than gonna, two links? Yeah, you think I'm smart enough to care about tech it? I don't no, give a shit. It, I don't know what that okay. means. I don't I have, have to make over that time, work. I was talking about this last night on the stream. <laughs> over time, I've kind of fallen away from. Well, not last night on stream. I was talking about this last night before stream. Over time, I've kind of fallen away from mods. Not entirely. Like, a lot of mods I still enjoy, but, like... Oh, we got really him! Really heavyweight. We finally got Really him. heavyweight stuff. It's just... It gives such a, like, definitive end to the content, right? Like, like when you finish up a mod pack, you congratulations, you finished your, like, three big mods in the pack, and then you're done. But, like, when you're playing with vanilla, it's... Go find your own event. Like, go find your own thing to do. Like, fuck off. Go yeah, find exactly. your own thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some mods that do that better than others. Some mods that have like late game content that is like, "Hey, you've ground for twenty minutes to get to this. You've ground for two hours to get to this point. Uh, here's your reward for doing that. Now go f- fuck off and find your own thing to do." Right? It doesn't feel like like some some mod like Twilight Forest. You you guys don't know what that is necessarily, but it's a, it's an alternate dimension mod. It, when you finish it, it you're done. Like that's that's it with that area. You have no reason to return to it for any reason. Yeah. Uh. A lot of magic mods and tech mods do the same thing. Like once you get to the end game of it, that's it. You've done all the things. Congratulations. Here's your trophy. Uh, it's why I like things. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm liking a lot more lightweight things and a lot more um, unclear endings for things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crate's been my big my big play lately because it's just yeah. You made cool. You made conveyor belts and you did all your conveyor belt stuff to get basic like automation. But like 
okay, now go play around with all the other toys that this that this mod has and go combine them with other, like it's just there are better things to do. Yeah, I, I can combine that. I think there are sometimes there are mods that like transcend that. Um, there are, yeah, and there are like that's like content pack or content pack mods are definitely like mid tier. And then, like, there are, like, the mods that are, like, content pack, but also, like, just more of a genuine expansion upon, like, a vanilla. Those are, like, mm. S tier. And then 100%. cosmetic mods that do meme shit. F tier, if you download them, don't talk to me. If I see one more goddamn, ah, oh, be one punch from one punch man, yes, I'm going to kill I, myself. If you, if you do, if you're like, I love mods, I like to be one punch man in Minecraft, it makes you one shot everything and be invincible. Fuck off. That's not fun. I mean, forever. I'm glad you're having fun, but don't, you're not my friend. <laughs> you're not my friend. You're not a good person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's kind of like the people who were like, are like, hey man, check this out. And then show you like the Randy Savage Skyrim dragon mod. And you're like, wow, cool, man. Mm-hmm. It's 2021. Mm-hmm. Like, and here's the thing, right? I don't care if you use them. No, if I don't you, either. Li- if the way that you like your game care. is memed up I, and fun, I more care. power to you. But and it's it's a recommendations thing, right? This is it goes hand in hand, I think, with the fact that I don't trust people to recommend media to me as a general rule, because I don't like comedies as a as a blanket statement. I usually just say I don't like comedies because the comedies that I like are very, very prevalent. They're not exactly underground, but I only like certain facets of the stereotypical comedy movie. You know, like I don't like sex and drinking focused comedy movies. I just, I they don't Shocking. resonate with me. I know, right? You're probably shocked. Anyone who knows me in real life is yeah. like, Noah, what do you mean you hate sex and drinking comedy movies? Speaking of but, which, I watched Talladega Nights the other day. <laughs> that movie is cool because the entire joke about it is that the main character is homophobic. And that's funny. Is that the whole joke? Half the movie is spent being like, that guy's gay. Isn't that stupid? Man. I, and I don't movies know. Movies just were different back then. Yeah. I, I. The thing is, I'm not sure if, I don't know how meta it is. Like, I, gotta, I, I don't know if it's actually out. like, what? That was in 2006, dude. That was sincere. They yeah, meant it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just like genuinely not a good movie. It's just shit. <laughs> fun to watch now and be like wow i'm gonna pretend that this is ironic because if it is this is funny and i don't think it is <laughs> yeah i don't think it is if it was ironic it'd be funny mm-hmm. but i don't think it is but yeah um same thing with mods to bring it back is a lot of funny mods i'll enjoy for like five seconds and then i'll be like all right let's get rid of this so i can actually like take my game seriously because i don't mind funny games i don't mind like cutesy different styles of things but like Skyrim is a really good example of if I'm playing Skyrim, while I may be happy to have my mud crab with top hat and monocle mod all say, the time, because I mean, yeah, that's, exactly. that's peak, you know, every now and then you're just the going around. And it's like, oh, it's Sir Mud Crab again. That's funny. But if I also don't want Randy Savage every single time or Thomas the Tank Engine every single time, you know, like yeah, every now I... and then when it's like a joke, it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I can agree. I, I, I'll, I'll say, I've said it several times, I don't know that I've ever played a video game that I thought was funny. I don't think they're, I don't think funny video games exist so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I just, I've never found a video game that I'm like, this is genuinely funny. This has me laughing. Every once in a while, it'll get a chuckle out of me. I'll be like, huh. But I've never been like, this is a funny experience. I, I've never like had a game that I would categorize as funny. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think okay. that's I'm trying to think of there if there are any like specifically comedy games like there I are a lot like of games that have comedy border yeah. Legos. You know what? The Lego. Oh, games. no. Borderlands. <laughs> the Lego <laughs> games, I think, are a good comedy game. I think so, too, because they Especially have a cool the, thing, I mean, but they're not exclusively the ones for. I know, but Saints Row, I think, would be a comedy game. And that's wildly hit or miss. It's the only good one. I think it's going to be a miss for me, dog. Let's see. I think some parts of it are like, damn, that was real funny when I was. 12 that's the issue again, right? so po- much comedy gets dated it... because comedy is funny in the now and so much know, comedy dude. is current things and sometimes you can look back and be like yeah this is pretty good and then other times you look at it and it's like oh man that aged poorly you know i i some parts of that yeah and then there are some parts that i'm like i'm looking at saints row specifically and i'm like damn 
hitting people with a giant purple dildo. That's still kind of funny. I could like, not agree less. <laughs> that's fine. I, it's fine. I'm a, I'm a simple man, and sometimes it's, it's still kind of funny. Is it a little I, cringe? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's I think the problem. Just... I think I think the 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 line between humor and cringe, especially especially in video games, is so 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 thin. Yeah, and I, think and I feel like a lot of the game, like I mean, Borderlands literally never crosses over the line to humor. Well, oh, there's that. Yeah, it lives on the cringe side. Uh, no, there we talked about this that last I really week, appreciated. Didn't we? There are a couple of lines in Portlands that no one I uh, no one I talked about a couple of weeks ago that no one I really appreciated. I I I, I can't remember which ones they were, but I do remember the ones that were like, "Hey, that's pretty good." No, oh, it's convenient it's, that you it, and I both don't remember the things we liked about Borderlands now. I know, right? Now. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, no, it's like a handsome Jack line. He, he, oh, it's the fucking literally what happened at the end of the last one where he's like, "Oh, see, it would have been really, he like finally finds his stupid little like violin. He's like, you know what? It would be really fucking funny. Fuck you." And hangs up like that's pretty good i appreciate that oh that's, yeah that's his tiny just, tiny violin joke uh, that was that his, was see there because uh, that's timing based humor moment. and it's not it's not that's um, still comedy modern era well no that's that's the point though so much uh so much comedy it tends to be based around like things happening right now and it's a situational like time frame thing and that's why a lot of like especially video games that are built to tap into the memeing gamer market shall we say Mm -hmm. um no. tend to age like old milk portal 2 I has some good comedy moments wrong go. wrong oh wrong shit i can't I, believe I, you were I also wrong. like this, this i, I only laugh at like you. seven things and they're not really funny i i i have a very soft spot for the the hello this is the part where i kill you well this is the part where he kills us chapter five the part where he kills you quality quality i comedy. could not laugh at anything less than that but unfortunately, I'm uh, geared towards hating everything I come in contact with and usually destroying everything that's ever been good in my life. So it's kind of like big mood, you know, sometimes Jackson's we don't a laugh fan at post ironic cringe. Um, oh, speaking, speaking of <laughs> I just like uh, I think you should leave. Speaking of destroying everything good in one's life. Uh, not that like but again, I'm just uh, fucking not that it matters to anyone else besides me, but uh, fucking Sean I's eight years this week and I am just. You guys were in transition to saying it, that, but congratulations. It, well, yeah, I would agree. You know, destroying everything good in my life. Uh, but no, I don't it, actually. It, I'm very happy. I'm very pleased. It, it's it's very exciting. Well, I'm glad, though. I'm happy for you guys. It's a long fucking time. So goddamn long. It's not that long. Yeah, four billion years. <laughs> nah, I don't. Oh, you, oh. Yeah, talk to you me guys about the awkward. age of the universe if you want to talk oh, about a long time. You idiots weren't around for the pre-Cambrian era. That shit was fire. <laughs> Out in the Devonian age, me and the Coelacans were literally vibing 24-7. <laughs> well, I think this is a good time for us to wrap up. Would you, would you know, like? I, I think we're done here. It was fire. <laughs> Thanks for listening this week, everybody. Please uh, check the links in the description uh, for following and this that the other thing don't follow jackson as per usual of course uh it's about all bro, as soon as those microbes evolved uh neural fibers bro they were hitting that chronic like crazy um by the way uh really super selfish uh self promo here not of myself but of uh my wife nina wrote a book and it is out right now uh you could you missed the chance to pre-order uh that's i guess on me for not mentioning it sooner but it also was on it was on twitter and i talked about it there so you know follow me there so if that's you on you for not following on twitter frankly exactly exactly Ooh. uh but yeah her book is out you can get it on amazon right now um that's about all i've got to say uh the uh who who the unwanted prophet i was about to s <laughs> i forgot what the name was for just a hot second there but yeah good save, good save, unwanted save, prophet follow at nina wolverina for all the book information that's all that she's like talking about at the moment uh justifiably so check it out if you need yourself a good kindle book to uh dip away with during the uh, holiday weekend and all that, you know, got you hooked up.